everyone. A very good morning and welcome to Iris Carbon Finite Solution webinar on highlights of 32nd XVRL Europe Confidence and Insights from Quality Analysis for 2023 annual reports. We are five minutes to 2.30 or you can say 11 a.m. CET, 2.30 IST, and we will be shortly starting uh, with the webinar. Please stay tuned. It is 11 a.m. CET. Hello, everyone. A very good morning and welcome to Iris Carbon's webinar on highlights from the conference, XBRL Europe conference and analysis of ESIF documents. Today, we will be having an interactive uh, webinar and uh, along with me, I have two colleagues from uh, our you know team. Uh, one is Nupur Samantare and Praveen Rajpurohit. I will be shortly introducing them. i waiting for two minutes again for those who haven't joined yet. Before that, going ahead with Iris Business Services. We function under the name of Phoenix Solutions in the UK. We are not associated with UK's Iris Software Group. So our trade name or the you know functional name in the UK is Phoenix Solution. For rest of the Europe, you know us, we are Iris Carbon. Eleven oh one. So I think we should get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Iris Carbon's webinar. Today, in our webinar, we have speakers with Pravin Rajpurohit and Nupur Samantare. Along with me, I am Anushree, and I head the customer success for our flagship product line, Iris Carbon. Pravin Rajpurohit comes with a very rich experience of XBRL and IXBRL domain, and he has worked in the same domain for almost decade plus. With Iris, he will be shortly completing his journey of 3.5 years. Uh, that is our speaker, Pravin, and he will be focusing upon the highlights of 32nd XPRL Europe Conference. Along with Pravin, we have Nupur Samantare. Nupur Samantare is a chartered accountant by profession, and Pravin and Nupur both are engaged on the ESF part currently. Nupur helps with the partner engagements on the ESIF side along with that. And she is extremely uh, smart and, you know, career oriented with ambitious uh, nature. So that's all from our speaker side, Pravin and Nupur, along with me, Anushri Aparajan. So let us go ahead and see what is today's agenda. We will be covering the highlights of 32nd XBRL Europe conference on the topic of ESA. What is ESAP? What are the timelines? Do you know what is ESAP? We will be covering all the aspects, whatever are presented in the conference for you. Yes, the most talked about topic, CSRD reporting and the timelines, that is something we will be bringing for you um, straight from the conference updates. And digital signature, something new. Is it coming or is it something you can, you know, uh, stay back and relax? More to know about the digital signature in our next segment. The section of the webinar today will be focusing upon the ESEP quality analysis for 2023 annual reports. This is a continuous activity which happens at IRIS, uh, wherein we analyze the XBRL and IXBL documents, and these are analyzed with the experts from the domain, that is XBRL and IXBRL domain. And here we find the summary currently for this webinar. We have analyzed 11 countries who have submitted their ESIF, and we have analyzed the IXBRL filings for them. The summary and the observations are quite interesting. Nupur Samantari will be taking you through the journey of the quality analysis. Before we deep dive into the webinar aspects, a little about us for you to know who we are and what do we do. We are IRIS, as in IRIS Business Services Limited. We recently completed our 20 years milestone. Yes, our company is very much, uh, you know, uh, old. You can say 20 years old, and we have presence across 52 countries, and have done 5,000 plus customers uh, across the globe. Along with that, million filings has been already complied with IRIS. Function in three segments: that is collect create and consume, wherein collect is the segment, the data is collected, 
through web forms or the XBRL forms, and mainly we function through regulators in this particular segment. With our create segment, many of you know that yes, Iris Carbon, the SAS waste solution, and our Iris GST for India, that is the indirect taxation, and many other you know SAS based platforms are functioning from the create part of it. From the consume part of it, whenever there is a submission which is done in the XBRL IXBRL format, we leverage the data and draw insightful analytics of the same. You will be able to see the analytics today from the consume division itself. We are a listed company and we have a deep market expertise in XBRL and non XBRL domain. To our credit, we have lots of accolades, namely, we have best fintech 2021 and best msme 2022 so those are certain accolades from iris domain to our credit our flagship product iris carbon which is hosted on cloud with microsoft azure and is soc 1 soc 2 type 2 certified platform with a certification from xbrl international the platform manages your financial and non-financial compliances is the blanket slide or blanket presentation of our select clients yes we have many more from this just couldn't fit in one slide iris carbon as a product we have a presence across 35 countries that is european countries plus us brazil south africa ireland and uh, other countries so that is iris carbon's landscape with 4.8 uh, on five CSAT customer satisfaction score, and yes, stop notching the XBRL quality. We have just won the batches for G2 in spring with best support, easiest to do the business, and high performer for the spring 2024. We have also been award awarded as an Apple Award for the ERP plus finance in the small and mid market segment. Gartner and Pure Insights have rated us at 4.8, and Captera, we are on 4.9 out of 5. More stars makes us glow more, and that is for you. So that's on from the Iris Carbon uh, highlights side. Now I will ask Praveen to go ahead and shed some light upon the findings of 36, uh, 32nd XBRL Europe Conference. Uh, which was held in Malta, 23rd and 24th of May. So now I turn my screen to Praveen. And uh, yes, over to you, Praveen. Thank you, Anukri. Yes, so today I'll be taking you through the highlights of uh, 32nd XBRL Europe Conference, which was held at 23rd and 24th May in Malta. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not able to see the presentation, yeah, okay. First topic which we are going to look into is the ESAP applicability and timelines, which is going to be uh, coming in the newer future, or you can say the upcoming year. And ESAP stands for uh yeah before we go ahead and ESAP stands for and that is a question for you so there is a short poll which is coming up for you how much do you know about ESAP what is ESAP and how it is related to all of the companies can we have the poll please Question in the poll states, do you know about ESA? And we have the majority of them saying no. And we have 40% who are saying yes. So I'm very glad to see this, that there are a few people who know about ESA. And we will be shedding some light on what is ESA and how it is going to uh, take your way forward. So I'm turning my screen to Praveen now to take you ahead with the ESA details. Just a second, let me share my screen. Yeah. Yes, Praveen. 
thank you anushree for sharing the information that 40% of the joiners knows about the esap so what is esap is like esap stands for european single access point it is a platform being developed by esma to create a single access point for all the reports which are uh, reported by the eu financial like eu regulated uh, companies so basically we can say that uh, a single access point for all the eu financial data and i would like to highlight one important point uh, around this topic is that there is no additional requirement for the uh, for us or you can say for the companies to um, <clears throat> around this isf platform so everything will be taken care by om or the regulatory moving ahead we can see uh, we, we can go ahead with the importance of isf so it will allow to it will allow as much to collect process and analyze the data like data uh, analyze the data from your market participants in real time that means uh, if you want to compare the data if you want to analyze the data then it is an open source where companies can go ahead and analyze that data and also compare the data it will also help to streamline the regulatory reporting process as all the data will be collected and stored in one place a single repository will be uh, uh, will be made here so all the data will be available at a single point where all the companies can go ahead and access the data moving ahead to the next slide so is that has some timelines and what should be like uh, it has a phase wise manner and timeline like what will be collected what will be reported and published during which year and what information will be processed so in the phase 1 from july 2026 the data will be collected is the information issued by the uh, information provided by the issuers of security or you can say the transparency directive so all the data will be collected and is that goes live by july 2027 which means the data which is uh, collected from the issuers of securities will be available on platform is a platform by july 2027 going on to the phase 2 uh phase 2 reporting and publication starts january 2028 and they are going to publish the information say esma reporting or you can say the annual financial report statements management reports and sustainability reports and everything will be available during uh, the period january 2028 so for the first two years or you can say the first two phases of esap the reporting and publication will be start uh, for a particular period and post that there will be a review report that review report will be conducted in january 2029 to make sure or to ensure that the requirements or the needs of the users and the stakeholders are met effectively and post that we will move on to the third phase where the reporting and publication will be starting in january 2020 2030 which will expand the scope of information the additional information will be available on the isf platform uh the information will be from more directives or regulators and it will be available on esap platform and so the take away point from this information of esap is that the companies are not required to make any additional efforts or additional things from their end to uh, and everything will be taken care by oems and regulators Okay. okay thank you praveen so that means that the additional disclosure requirement will not be there from any of the companies the take away from the companies over here is esap is a portal and the additional requirement for disclosing anything in addition to whatever is done currently so there is the article which are presented upon the esap it states that there won't be any additional disclosure requirement for the companies for for getting you know uh, published it on the esap so that is something which is a key take away and yes we have the time line so before we move away ahead to the next segment i would like to have the second poll and uh, which is a very interesting the most buzzed topic currently which is on csrd and the esg reporting can we have the second poll please okay i have to just stop sharing my screen here
So let us see what are the poll results and we can then go ahead with the next segment of CSRT. So the poll question was, by when is the IHPRL conversion needed for your ESG reports for the phase one? So that was the question. And to our surprise, the results are here that 45% of uh, you know attendees say that AR 2024 is to be reported in 2025. So that is wherein you need to convert your ESG report in IHPRL format. There is 39% who says that annual report 2025 is to be reported in 2026 in the IHPRL format. And uh, there is 8% which says not required until 2027 and 8% says they don't have clue when they need to convert the documents into the IHPRL format. So we have brought in the timeline, we have brought in the applicability on the CSRD part and Praveen will be you know, taking you through the details of all the uh, requirements from the CSRD perspective. So we just reshare my screen, we go ahead with the CSRD part. Any questions during the webinar, please put in the Q&A section and we will be taking it as we go ahead. So please feel free to go ahead and put your questions in the Q and this box. Over to you, Praveen. Thank you, Anushree. So with this, we'll move on to the next topic, which is CSRD, the ESG reporting. And it's a hot topic right now around the globe, you can say. Uh, and we have some questions which will be striking on the on our mind when we learn or when we see about CSRD. And the first question is like, do I need to uh, include my ESG reporting in annual report 2024. Uh, so for that, the answer is yes. For majority of us has to comply with ESG reporting. They have to include uh, the ESG reporting part on their annual report based on the criteria which are set by CSRD. And we will be going through the criteria uh, moving ahead. And the second question which price is like, do I need to barrel tag uh, the, my ESG reporting? So so moving ahead, like we'll go and see how tagging and everything is taken care and how the timelines are prepared. So here the CSRD stands for say the previous slide. Yeah. CSRD stands for Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. So many of us will be aware as uh, many of us would have started preparing around this ESG reporting or you can say sustainability reporting for that 2024 period. And CSRD is a directive which has been replaced the previous one, uh, the NFRD, which is which stands for Non-Financial Reporting Directive. Sustainability reporting is now mandatory, and CSRD requires companies to prepare their report uh, with ESG impact and performance to 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 standardize the, uh, like using the standardized framework European Sustainability Reporting Standard, which is ESRS which has been adopted by European Com Commission. And there is a broad scope of application for uh, all the large companies, or you can say large entities, which employs more than 250 and listed SMEs. And also there is a progressive phase in approach for all, like for uh, compliance with CSRD, with uh, different timelines for different set of companies or different types of companies. And we'll be moving ahead, like we'll be taking this timeline of reporting in the next slide. So here we can see what does this mean for companies. So the sustainability report, the information which the company can gather from here is the sustainability information should be a part of their annual report. It should be reported in the management report. And uh, companies are also encouraged to file their first IHBL reporting, or you can say the voluntary filing of the ESG reporting using the base taxonomy, the ESSRS draft taxonomy, which is available right now. Moving on to the next slide, where we will be seeing the applicability of CSRD for different types of entities based on the criteria set. So for the large companies, for the annual report 2025, which is going to be published in 2026, has to comply with CSRD if any of the two criteria the below mentioned criteria are set so the criteria are the average number of employees should be 250 with a net turnover of 50 million euros and the balance sheet total of 25 million so any of the large companies who come who has fulfilled 
this criteria has to file or has to comply with the CSRD. And for if you have any uh, SMEs or something like small and medium NPP who are fulfilling the requirements mentioned here, then they have to comply with CSRD for their annual report 2025 in the year uh, for their annual report 2026, which is going to be published in 2027. And the criteria are like average number of employees should be 10 to 250, and the next turnover should be around 900k to 4 to 50 million euros, with a balance sheet total of 450k to 25 million. And for all the new non-EU companies, uh, it uh, starts from 2028 annual report, and it has to meet any one of the criteria. For example, if they have a uh, a uh, turnover of 150 million in EU and with at least one branch who is, which is fair in EU region and generating the turnover of about 40 million euros or any subsidiary company which is having a, like which is a large entity or a listed SME. So any of these criteria are meeting up with your company, then yes, you have to uh, comply with the CSRD based on the years they have mentioned here. And ex, uh, going to the exemption, yes, there are some exemptions for the subsidiary companies, except the large listed companies. So if there are any, there is a group company who is publishing that consolidated report, including the CSRD information or CSRD sustainability statement, then the subsidiary company has the exemption of it. Okay. Thank you, Praveen, for uh, you know shedding light on the CSRD application. Ability. I would just like to summarize it that for the large companies, your annual report of 2024 will be published in 2025 with the CSRD applicability, which means that if your company is falling between any of the two criteria from the three listed criteria, that is 250 employees, 50 million turnover, or the balance sheet total of 20 million euros, if any of these two criteria are you know met then your company needs to include the ESG or the CSRD report, or you can say, you know, the ESG report in your annual report, in the management report section. So that is something which I just wanted to clarify that your annual report 2024, which will be submitted or published in 2025, is something which will have your CSRD application. Similarly, for the listed SMEs, 2026 is the publication time wherein your report with 2025 annual report 2025 will be um, including your CSRD applications or CSRD uh, directives. So particularly your ESG report based on ESRS will have to be prepared for your listed SMEs for annual report 2025 if any of the two criteria are met which are listed below that is average employees between 10 to 20 to 50 the uh, net turnover is from like 900k or to 50 million or you know 450k and 25 million any of these are the uh, balance sheet total these are the ranges so any two criteria from this are met your listed sme annual report 2025 will need to be published in 2026 along with the esrs esg report similarly there is a little bit of relaxation for the non-eu companies and uh, the publication will happen for annual report 2027 in 2028. So these are the criteria and the publication timelines for the CSRD. And uh, thank you, Praveen, for shedding light on the same. Let us move to the ESRS taxonomy perspective, which uh, sheds light on the IXBRL purpose of it. Over to you, Praveen. Yes, thank you. So there are, like, let us go to the <coughs> development and implementation of XBRL taxonomy. Uh, ESRS XBL taxonomy. So in the screen, you can see a red dot which states the current position of us, like where we stand now. So the ESRS proposed taxonomy is shared and it has been in discussion with the relevant regulatory bodies, say BRCF, PEG, and SRB for the final approval. So once the discussion is completed and the final approval is provided, it is stated that, or we can say, uh, we can expect the final release of ESRS SBL taxonomy around Q3 2024. And the source information for this information 
uh, is from EFRAC presentation at EU, EU X barrel conference. And uh, with this, the final X, like if uh, with this final ESRS X, X, uh, X barrel taxonomy is releasing, uh, there will be a question like whether we need to X barrel tag our uh, ESG reports. So till now, we don't have any information about around this, like whether we need to start the tagging or not. Because in around 2024 and 2025, ESMA, uh, ESMA and European Commission is going to work on the on amending the uh, ESF RTS, which means uh, they'll be working whether the like, it is not finalized that we will be having a single taxonomy or a multi-targeted taxonomy to is to use for ESF uh, like ESG tagging. So still there is uh, no update from the ESMA side. So once the um, latest amended RTS is published. We'll be able to, we'll be able to know whether we have to proceed with the tagging for the financial year 2025 or not. And as per the roadmap, all the XBRL reports are need to be filed to OAMs. And as we have discussed in the previous slides of ESAP, uh, all the XBRL reports, including the sustainability reporting, will be available on single EU repository, which is ESAP. But still, we don't have any confirmation on this. So once the final RTS is provided by the ESMA, we'll be able to see or we will be able to provide information on the first tagging of ESF or like ESG, sorry. Yes, Anushi, we can move ahead with the next topic. And yeah, so, so the important takeaway, uh, I would like to highlight the important takeaway is that the companies uh, have to prepare themselves for the changes which are coming on the ESRS uh, ESG reporting tagging and we also urge or uh, it is an urge to all the companies that they can voluntarily go ahead and start preparing or filing their ESRS ESG reporting using the draft ESRS taxonomy. Thank you Praveen. So here is a uh, shout out to all the companies who are currently engaged in preparing their CSRD report. You are definitely on the right track, but also what is needed is if your CSRD report is ready, please go ahead and do a voluntary tagging of IXBRL documents that will help you from the audit purposes, the ESIF audit purposes for the next year, wherein not many changes will have to be incorporated. The taxonomy which is currently available, the draft one set to one taxonomy, it is uh the taxonomy which is almost ready there won't be any significant changes in the taxonomy per se that is what has been communicated so far uh so once it is transferred to the european commission and esma and whatever is the finalized taxonomy which comes out for tagging definitely the preliminary stages of the tagging will already be completed by companies if you go ahead and do a voluntary tagging of your esrs report Thank you, Praveen, for shedding light. And now we slowly move to the third section of digital signatures. And uh, very much interesting, a new concept. Uh, we had, you know, uh, read about it in the newsletters for XBRL International. So here is a poll question. Next poll question, please. Revolves around the digital signatures. Let us see the poll results. Question was, are you using digital signatures for any of the mandate? And it is much expected that 42% say yes and 57% say no. So yes, uh, many of the times digital signatures are needed even in case of agreements or in any of the legal document. The Signing is mostly complied with the digital signatures, which is attached or it is embedded, and that is the way to go ahead with. I see a raised hand. Uh, there is a question. I would like to take the question. If I understand well, we don't know yet if CSRD report would be tagged in 2025 
or FY2024? So yes, that is the uh, a good question. Thank you for that question. I would like to answer it. Yes, there is no clarity at this point in time. But what IFRA has stated is they encourage all the uh, companies who are already in process of preparing their CSRD report to please go ahead and do a voluntary tagging using the draft ESRS taxonomy. That is the draft one set one taxonomy. It is urged to all the companies to go ahead and do a voluntary tagging for it. So that can be done after your publication of your annual report 2024. Uh, but yes, until we are awaiting for the updated RTS from ESMA, uh, we cannot say what is the deadline. To answer your question, for the submission purposes, uh, at this point in time, it is difficult to say whether your 2024 report will be tagged from the publication perspective. But yes, after your publication is done, definitely a voluntary tagging is something which is expected. I hope I have answered your question. Okay, so thank you for the question. Okay, and the poll result is also there. So let us go ahead and see what digital signature mean to us. So let me just share my reshare my screen, please, and let Pravin take the stage. Yeah. Please go ahead, Pravin. Thank you, Anushi. So yes, uh, we move on to the third topic, which is digital signature for ESAP. So there is a lot of discussion going around the digital signature, the need of digital signature for ESAP reports. So uh, so there, so currently like digital signature, uh, like as the report is in digital format, yes, it should be a digital sign also should be included. But it is not as easy as uh, signing a legal document or a contract. So, and we can move ahead with the, like, as you can see, uh, say, see the digital signature for ESS. Yes, it's coming, but currently we don't have any timeline mentioned or announced. Uh, a tentative timeline is there, which is around 2027. It will be applicable for ESS reports. So still we haven't received any update and we don't have any written confirmation on the same. And digital, so we can go ahead with uh, why digital signature is being considered. So all the documents, or you can say all the ESAP reports which are fin uh, like finalized and audited by the auditors, have to be like should have a legal touch. So to provide that legal touch to the document, ESAP has in, is going to introduce the digital signature, which will provide the uh, legal touch for that particular document that there have not been any modification done once it is finally approved or signed off from the auditor. And what's latest around the digital signature is that uh, a milestone has been reached with the release of first public working draft around digital signature in XPL report with specification. And it has been uh, released by the working group B6, which is known as digital signature in XBRL working group, which was established in 2022 by XBRL International. So moving ahead to the next slide, uh, everything, whatever new comes, always comes with a challenge. So for example, if uh, introducing the digital signature, it's not very easy. It has that specific challenge, which uh, the working group is working on it, and they are trying to overcome those challenges. And below are the listed challenges which the working groups are uh, facing right now. And the first one is the dependencies. Uh, so the XBRL report, or you can say the XBRL package, it's not a single report, or you can say uh, a single report is included in the package. There are multiple reports, so they have to consider multiple things for including the digital signature, whether the taxonomy is to be included, whether the extension taxonomy or the base taxonomy should be included, or the part of uh, the XML files, styling, CSS, fonts, and images are included with the digital signature or not. And it also has uh, an issue where like the group has to or we have to analyze where to place the signature as it consists of multiple files in the package. So we don't know, like we are going to, we are, the group is go, analyzing the place where to include the signature, whether it has to be embedded in the report or it has to be detached from the report. 
and also there is a concern about the partial signatures sometimes it happens the auditors restrict their opinion for a single part or a part of an annual report and not the entire annual report so the group is working on ability to create a signature which which relates to only a single part or the auditor part of the report and the uh, specification is published and they are it is open for the feedback and the insight which we can take it from this information is that the company has to prepare themselves for the digital signature which is going to come in future for each report. And with this, we like uh, I would like to turn over to Nupur, who is going to take uh, the insights from quality analysis for ECF 2023 annual reports with some data trends as well. Thank you for joining. Over to you, Nupur. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you, Praveen for these updates and uh, yes we will be diving into the insights from quality analysis but uh, just to take a look on the recap whatever we considered is first we have gone ahead with the digital transfer or conversion of your financials then it is slowly extended to the non-financial part of it which is esg and now with introduction which is going to come tentatively around 2027 it is a tentative timeline for the digital signature, we can see majority of the data is digitally reported and digitally authenticated. So with this, it becomes optimum and it becomes like very, very important to have certain insights from what the digital data is being reported. How is the data which has been reported? And uh, since the beginning of uh, ESEF mandate, we have undertaken, voluntarily undertaken the analysis part of this. So we do the analysis of XBRL and IXBRL documents, which are submitted for year on year basis. Today, we will be focusing upon insights mainly from the annual report 2023, but also a slight trend analysis as well. So we go ahead, there is a poll question, which will be focusing upon the insights. And let us take the poll question first. We'll just go ahead and see the full results. You analyzed the quality of your ESEP document. So here is the 54 percent who are saying no. We have not, you know, like done the quality analysis, and we have, like, you know, 40 40 percent who are saying yes. We have done the quality analysis. So thank you so much for the uh, participation. And we have the questions over here. Uh, yeah, this is already answered. So moving ahead, let us focus upon the ESEF analysis. So over to you, Nupur. Let me just share my screen. Thank you very much, Anushri. And thank you, Praveen, for sharing with us the insightful updates from the XBRL conference. Hello, everyone. Today, I will be speaking on the topic quality analysis of the ESEF reports of 2023, where we have taken the reports of around 1,426 companies operating in 23 industries from 11 countries. The total concepts which has been tagged in all these reports is around 350,000, whereas wherein uh, 33,000 extension concepts has been used for the tagging. Going further to the next slide, in 2022 also we have done an analysis of this kind where we have taken the 2021 ECF reports. So we got a chance to do a trend analysis of the, uh, the result which we got uh, in 2022 and in this time. So here you can see the trend which we have, uh, which you can see in this graph. There, there have been notable changes in the discrepancies. As you can see in some of the countries like Greece and Sweden, companies have successive, successfully been able to reduce the discrepancies in the ESAFE report. Whereas in com uh, countries like UK and Denmark, the errors or the discrepancies have increased. For instance, in case of uh, Denmark, we have taken around 149 country companies in the analysis and each and every company has some short of discrepancies in the report. We did an in, in-depth study also that revealed that the majority of errors or discrepancies in Denmark fall into two specific categories, that is technical errors, that is around 22%, and XBR specification errors. That means where XBL specification guidelines have not been uh, followed in the report, consisting around 53% in, in the companies in Denmark. 
the common example of XBL specification discrepancies include where an in, uh, invalid context period has been assigned in the report or non-immunibic concepts has been uh, has been there in the calculation link base. Such type of uh, discrepancies through an error one error in the report. Similarly, in term of technical errors, often stem from flaws like hidden facts in the report or wherever there is any extra links present in the report, then this type of discrepancies are seen in the report. So what exactly are the root causes of this error? We investigated this and we have identified few reasons uh, which are there in the next slide. So very first reason is the increase in scope of tagging over the last two years. Back in 2021 report, only the financial uh, statements tagging was uh, mandatory. But in 23 reports, it's not only tagging of the financial statement, but also the tagging of the notes. So with the increase in scope of the tagging uh, in the reports, the chances of increasing uh, the discrepancies have also increased. And here you can see the result as we saw in the uh, previous slide. Similarly, uh, the uh, the reasons the another reason is the ESA vendor expertise and the software capabilities where the software should be capable of uh, making the report discrepancies free so that it could be filed on the platform. Significant delay in ESA filing of application. They have, we have seen that in few of the countries like UK, there have been significant delays in the ESA filing. Audit not mandatory in countries like UK. In UK, we have specifically in UK, we have seen that audit of the ESAF report is not yet mandatory, which is there in countries like Germany and Austria, etc. So audit of ESAF report should be made mandatory to ensure that there is no discrepancies in the reports which are prepared. Business, business reorganization is another reason. Lately, we have seen a lot of business reorganizations has been occurred internally and externally, which has been affecting the process of ESAF reporting. Internal means, where is there any, uh, any companies are delisted or external means, whenever there any company has been acquired by another company. So in the last two years, we have seen a lot of reorganization within and external to the companies. Going further, we have also done a country-wise analysis. Here you can see the country-wise analysis and you can clearly see the winner are Greece and Sweden. In spite of increase in the scope of the tagging, they are like, the companies in Greece and Sweden have been able to maintain or decrease the chances or the number percentage of discrepancies in the report. And you can see that uh, as we have co covered that Denmark is the one where each and every company has some sort of discrepancy in the report. Industry wise also we have done a comparison. The next slide you can see an industry wise comparison. Here you can clearly see that the construction and mining sector, the companies operating in this industry have the highest percentage of discrepancies around 20 percent similarly followed by uh, financials so this the main reason of the uh, highest or highest percentage of discrepancy in this in both this uh, industry is because of the complexity in the preparation of this uh, the reports of this uh, com companies operating in this sector and also the large number of extensions which has been used in the financial sectors and the construction uh, companies in the preparation of the report now going further, what exactly are the discrepancies? Basically, uh, the discrepancies are either the error and the warning. So errors is the uh, the red flag or the discrepancy in the report, which are blockers, which are which will not allow uh, you to go ahead and do the filing. So we have to make sure that before going for the filing, we have to correct or resolve the errors. So under errors, you can see there are like different category of errors, like technical extension or taxonomy guideline errors or anchoring guidelines where, where whenever the companies or report these guidelines are not maintained then that will throw up an error message similarly warnings are not at all blockers that means fine you can go ahead and do the filing uh, the different categories of warnings are calculation inconsistencies label guidelines whenever the guidelines as per the uh, as per this uh, label guideline has been not been maintained in the report or taxonomy package specification has not been followed during the preparation of the ESAF report, then that will give us a warning message. Going further to see what exactly and what other things come under the category, in the next slide you can see that we have just tried to put the different categories of the error. Starting with the extension guideline error, here I will just try to give us an example like uh, whenever the guideline related to extension taxonomy is not followed in the report, 
how it will give us the error message. For example, these are schema uh, related errors. Whenever there is any invalid character present in the IXBR report or uh, any concept which has been tagged in the report is not present in the presentation link base, then that will throw up this extension in this type of error. Technical error, whenever there is any hidden fact or any external uh, reference link present in the report. Similarly, there are other categories also. For example, label guideline, calculation link base not prepared. If any, any element is tagged in the report but it is not present uh, in the calculation link base, then that will throw up an error. Taxonomy package also, if the package or file is not prepared as per the latest taxonomy specification, which is mentioned in the ESMA manual, then that will also throw up a red flag. Similarly, going for the, the next slide. So we have tried to, uh, can we just go to the next slide? Yes, we, we have just tried to summarize the uh, different uh, kind of uh, errors and what are the percentage of these errors from the total that we have uh, bought in the analysis. So here you can see that the total, uh, from the total error around 31% is extension taxonomy guideline uh, followed by the technical errors. Similarly, if you go further towards the warning category, in the next slide, we have just tried to put up the different categories uh, where we get a warning message when the report is validated on the platform. We start with label guideline, then external taxonomy guideline. These are the different uh, uh, different categories of warning. I would like to elaborate a few of them, like ex extension taxonomy guideline. So whenever the report is not uh, as per the LC3 convention, so in that case, it will throw up a, a warning message. Uh, I want to specifically give example here. For example, profit and loss before exceptional item. The element name should be uh, should be uh, should be presented as profit loss before exceptional item without any special characters used in the name for, uh, like space or any dash etc. That is exactly as per the LCR convention. So we should follow this guideline. If it is not followed, then that system will throw up a warning message. Similarly, if there is any miss, missing mandatory tag, which has not been uh, not been tagged in the report, or if, if there is any technical specification, which has not been followed in the preparation of the report. If reported value is below zero, for example, there are few, uh, few elements uh, uh, should be in trade balance type, for example, statutory reserve. It should be in trade balance type or reported negative in the financial statement, then that, throw, that will throw up a warning message. Duplicate facts, for example, we normally get warning messages because of dimensional spills whenever any element is reported with the financial statement, like in different link bases, then that will throw up the dimensional spill. So error wise, whenever you get any error message that is completely okay, you can just go ahead and do the filing because error, uh, sorry, warnings are not blockers. They don't block the filing. Going forward, we have prepared a, a report, a summary report of a different category of warnings and what are the percentage uh, of that. So we have uh, in in all the reports which we have taken for the analysis, we have seen the maximum warning that is 42% is coming because of the rounding of calculation, rounding of uh, warnings. So this is mainly because of the difference, uh, the rounding of difference which has been seen in the financial statement. So that is absolutely fine. Uh, the companies can go ahead and do the filing even if this rounding of difference is there in the report. Can we go further to the next slide? As everyone need a report uh, with no discrepancies, so here we have just given a very quick tip for ensuring a high quality of eSafe report to ensure a successful and smooth eSafe filing. The very first uh, point is to choose your eSafe software service provider, a reputed one who ensure that they give you the file error free and warning free. Even if warnings are not blockers for the filing, we have to make sure that there should not be any warnings in the report. Esafe zip package size limit as per the regulator. That means uh, the size limit differ from regulator to regulator. For example, in Belgium, the Esafe zip package size limit is 50 MB. Similarly, in Portugal, it is 100 MB. So it should be taken into consideration while preparing the Esafe report. Name of the zip package also differ uh, reason to reason. For example, in Portugal, they have a specific naming convention as per the regulator and you also they have a specific naming convention so that uh, should be taken into consideration while preparing the eSafe report. Validator of the software provider provider tools should be updated as per the latest uh, manual and the confirmation suit. Table structure is one thing which uh, which also look forward 
uh, in the ne in the next filing season this year for 2023 this is this was a requirement for a regulator from a few countries like germany belgium uh, so next year onwards we have to keep in mind that table structure is something which is a must and we need to do it in the reports then last is calculation warnings during uh, due to uh, dimension spills we have seen this is a common warning which we saw in the reports in analysis dimension spills so as i said that when one uh, element or line item is reported in two different link bases there is some dimensional sales spills and this is just a warning and it will not uh, affect uh, the filing it will not block the file so these are the quick tips to ensure a high quality ESA filing going to the next slide so yeah yes. thank you Nupur. and uh, with this ESA quality analysis what we have brought in for you for all the attendees today we can have the ESA analysis for your annual report which are not published through iris carbon other than iris carbon we can definitely go ahead and do the quality analysis and also uh, we can go ahead and do the esg pilots for you so do get in touch either of your request or both of your requests if you have uh, at info at iriscarbon.com we are right over there for you thank you all the attendees for joining us here is a short summary where we can help you we can help you with the ESFI xprl Disclosure management where you can author your financial and non-financial reports. ESG ready to use templates based upon ESRS, updated ESRS, and along with the draft uh, taxonomy, which is the ESRS draft one set to one taxonomy, and data analytics using the ESF IEX VRL data. So these are the places where you can, you know, go ahead and uh, uh, we can help you do get in touch with us to you know, uh, get to know more on this. Few major disclaimers we would like to mention over here. The ESIP analysis is the yearly activity which we uh, always voluntarily undertake. And the documents, the IX payroll documents are rigorously uh, analy analyzed for the entire uh, European Union. At this point in time, for the webinar purposes, we just took the 11 countries. But yes, the analysis is done according across the EU, European Union, and the UK. This is not sponsored by any of the XBRL consortiums. We do the quality analysis on a voluntary basis, and the observations are strictly on the results of analysis. All the information which was disclosed as per the 32nd XBRL Europe conference are sourced from the presentations made during the conference, and we, these are hosted on the XBRL Europe website. And the sources of the information are also disclosed below each of these slides. We will be sharing the presentation with all the attendees today. Thank you for joining us. Do keep in touch. Write to us at info at iriscarbon.com. You can also visit our website at www.iriscarbon.com. After this, we would like to go ahead and we would like to uh, take up the question and answers for the today's uh, webinar. Let me just see what all questions we have so that you know we can go ahead and answer the questions we have a quite couple of questions over here i can just read out the questions and uh, read out the answers let me just go ahead and uh, start taking one by one so we have the question based upon esg we have the questions which are based upon the uh, other other aspects also let me just turn on the uh, screen and start reading it. Let me just see the questions. We have a hand raised, but I'm not able to see the questions. I request the admin to kindly release the question. I'm not able to read it.
give me a moment. We are just facing some technical difficulty. Just give me a moment. Okay, we have the questions over here. The question is, will ESAP require an additional compliance? During the uh, presentation itself, we mentioned this, that as the detailed articles and presentations, there will not be any additional compliance uh, to be required by the companies. That is what is informed in the detailed articles. And we will be going ahead and shedding some more light in our next series of these uh, webinars. But to our best information, no additional require uh, compliance is to be or disclosures are required to be uh, made by the company. I just carbon ready with the ESRS taxonomy. Yes, we are a taxonomy agnostic company uh, as Iris and also product as the Iris Carbon. We are taxonomy uh, agnostic. So we do have the ESRS draft one set one taxonomy. If you wish to go ahead and opt for the voluntary uh, conversion of your ESG report, please do get in touch with us. We'll do it for you. Does Iris Carbon has its audit platform? This comes from the digital signature uh, point of view. Yes, we do have the audit platform. Iris Carbon does has an audit platform and uh, wherein the auditors can go ahead and perform audit on the uh, platform. I have a question. What is the credibility of quality analysis? The quality analysis is performed by our ES, uh, uh, IHPRL and XPRL experts, and all of these experts have performed uh, in the domain from last 10 to you know 12 years in the domain. And uh, we have also, as an organization, been awarded as the top-notch quality quarter after quarter in the XPRL domain. So that gives us the entire you know domain part of it. We are the XPRL evangelists as an IRIS. And uh, yes, our experts perform this analysis. So it is not a data entry or any uh, data analysis job, but yes, the XBRL experts perform the XBRL analysis of it. Is Iris Carbon ready for ESG? Praveen, you would like to take this platform uh, question? Hello? So, uh, sorry, Anusha, uh, it was not audible. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, is Iris Carbon platform ready for ESG reporting? Yes, uh, yes. So Iris Carbon platform is uh, ready with the ESRS draft one taxonomy. And we are ready for ESRS uh, ESG tag. So we are ready with the ESG templates also uh, based upon ESRS. So either it is authoring or if it is conversion of your ESG report, we are ready both the ways. Uh, you can get in touch with us and we can walk you through the brochures. You can download the brochures from the resource section. The presentation will be shared with you. You can very well go ahead and download the brochures. And the last couple of questions. Uh, yes, I had a question about audit platform. We have an audit platform wherein the auditors come and audit their documents. And there are the hash code reports which are generated by the auditors, which can be generated only after signing off of the ESF report. So that is something which we are catering to at this point in time for audit and digital signature. Uh, will Iris Carbon bring the digital signatures? We will have to see. It is uh, quite a way forward. Definitely, we are a uh, you know fintech, and uh, we definitely have to explore whatever comes in as a adjacent to the mandate uh, the readiness the technical feasibility everything will be analyzed and if it is needed definitely we will be catering to the requirement so that's all for questions yes i have the question again when will the draft esrs taxonomy it is available in iris carbon platform so esrs taxonomy is available we can definitely go ahead and uh, you know uh, make the uh, voluntary filings for you so we can help you with that that's all for today's questions any other questions you would like to ask please don't hesitate you can write to us at info at iriscarbon.com i will just share the thank you slide once again so that you can get the details where you can write up uh, all the details just give me a second thank you everyone for joining in and it was pleasure interacting with you Thank you for your participation during uh, the, the poll questions. I think that makes us uh, the webinar more interactive. Many more webinars coming in, but yes, after your vacations, which we know are post August. So we, stay tuned. We will be coming up with next series of the webinar post August. 
have a lovely vacations and have a great day ahead thank you everyone for joining in thank you everyone thank you everyone